continuing on with the in-game tutorial, it's time to start thinking about large aircraft. In order to do that, we of course need the large aircraft permit. So we'll get that underway. But while we're waiting for that, we'll also get automated, um, well, automation researched as well. That's going to prove to be quite useful. The number of staff you require to handle large aircraft is significantly reduced by automation and you can actually use automation to largely get rid of the need for passenger service agents but uh, that's not my goal here my goal is just to demonstrate how it works if your airport looks anything like mine does at the moment where i've got two separate terminals and only have small and medium stands you might want to consider having your um, large stands attached to a third separate terminal the reason for doing that would largely be because depending on your game settings your large stands are going to be international flights rather than domestic so by having all large flights on a separate terminal you're helping to isolate the international flights from your domestic flights. The game settings I'm running under, I actually have a choice each time I build a stand. It can be um, international or not. So it's somewhat less relevant for this particular airport, but keep in mind, it might be worth having a separate terminal. Just remember that when you hire staff, you have to make sure that you've got them assigned to the appropriate terminal. Otherwise, you can end up wondering why you're hiring three times as many staff as you actually need. While you were waiting for those to complete, you might want to start constructing the terminal itself, setting up your check-in and toilets and staff rooms and baggage claim and all that sort of thing. But you'll notice I've left a lot of blank space at the moment. That's because I need to actually have room for all of the aircraft stands that I'm going to want. And they are quite large, as you can see. In fact, if you compare them to the medium stands, it's about one and a half times the size. If you compare it to the small stands, it's nearly the same size as three across, and then it's still deeper as well. So it's a bit tricky to be placing these when you don't actually have <laughs> the research done in order to place them. It's hard to allow space for them. So I'm going to switch into planning mode and see how many I can get here and whether I've got my taxiway long enough, etc, etc. The same applies to the runway itself. The runway is very long and costs a lot of money. Okay, that doesn't quite fit. Interesting. All right, I can't really go any further south. Let's see if I put in the large runway and I want to run it that way around. I can put it all the way up the top and get my large ramps, which are also, as the word implies, quite large. I'll chuck that, say, there and the landing end can be about there. So I made that taxiway too long and too far south. So I made the mistake of building it instead of doing it in planning mode. <laughs> so I'll have to delete some of that. And you want this to be about seven squares wide. So that matches the ramp. Um, so if I were to cut four off there, that should give me just enough room to squeeze an extra one in. Yeah. So I'll be able to have that in and I'll have one tile to spare. That's fine. I'm going to unpause and let that happen. In the meantime, I want to think about the actual terminal building itself. So this is really just check-in and baggage claim. There's going to be security, which will take up approximately that space. And then if I were to put, I can't do it yet. 
I want to have this all be second floor, basically. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to have six of them, which incidentally is perfect as far as baggage handling is concerned. Um, so there will need to be, let's put it about here, there will need to be a bit of terminal there for our baggage bay, which has to be in a secure zone, as you remember. And when you're constructing this, it's very important to remember that there has to be a connection for the road itself. I haven't really left any room for that, and that's something I need to rectify sooner rather than later. Another thing to be aware of is that setting up your large aircraft stands, etc., is extremely expensive. The runways themselves are a million dollars, and then you've got the cost of the stands and the terminal, which will inevitably be quite large. It's really something you need to plan for and not just try to do offhand. The other piece of research that's likely to be relevant to you at this point in time is the ultimate commercial license. The reason for that, as you can see, I've already got 125 out of 125 possible flights. So adding more stands right now doesn't actually achieve anything in terms of expanding my airport's capabilities. Yes, it opens up a different type of flight, but it doesn't actually let me have more planes in the air at the same time. So I highly, highly recommend getting the ultimate commercial license as well. Even if you don't think you need it yet, you will need it pretty soon. And just like the medium stands, large stands have the option to upgrade to have a jetway. Again, this is one of those things that you really would be better off doing rather than trying to rely on stair trucks just because of the speed involved. It's quicker to have people walking straight onto the boarding arm and into the plane than it is to have them going out onto the tarmac and upstairs. When you're doing that, of course, don't forget to buy the various vehicles that you need for your large aircraft. And these are different. You will need different belt loaders. You need the large carrier belt loader trucks. And you also need dominator pushback trucks, not the regular small force ones. You will also, of course, want sufficient baggage handling to cover your extra flights. Large flights do take the same fuel as medium flights, but it's still worth double checking that you've got enough in terms of fuel tank storage and in terms of fuel trucks driving around. The fuel tanks I have here is probably insufficient for the number of large flights that I've got. So I'm going to expand that by adding external storage tanks to this depot. Now there's no perfect way to line these up. They're an awkward size, but you'll see there's a green arrow pointing in. That must be within the spacing of the original depot. You can't have it away from the depot. As you see, the thing's turned red. You can't have it like that or like that. It has to be pointing at the depot itself. And you can have about five. It might be possible to get six in there if you really finagle it. Of course, the other thing to remember with your it upgrading to having large stands is that you will also require large hangars because of course you can't handle emergencies for large flights unless you've got the right tools available. Now the tricky thing about these of course is you have to provide road access as well as taxiway access. Now I'm actually going to place it on this side of my taxiway I think and I'm going to have two just to be safe. And you can see that I'm running extremely low on money at this point. I'm also running on a certain lack of contractors at the moment. There's just too much demand for their time. With the ultimate 
commercial license research finished you can of course build a large air traffic control tower like so um, bear in mind you want to build the new one before getting rid of your medium sized tower if you're wanting to get rid of it um, I'm going to place mine out of the way over here the other thing that comes with that research which is not actually part of the research description is that you get the option for a large radar and that also adds to the number of flights you can have in your flight roster so in here once they're constructed that will jump up significantly now that my air traffic control tower and large radar dome are built I've actually got a possible 350 flights now instead of the 125 I had previously so you can see that's actually an extraordinarily large difference the other thing you want to do when you're waiting for the runway to be constructed and all of that sort of thing in fact just waiting for the research really is making sure you have plenty of staff ready as I said before large flights because they have so many passengers you will need a lot of staff to cater for them while I've been waiting for all of that to happen I've been working on my security section and my um, terminal waiting area for boarding and I've got the automated options now so I'm going to use those in preference for boarding rather than having boarding gates that require passenger service agents so these work exactly the same way just place them out however many you think you'll need I'm going to put six in here because I know there will be a lot of passengers I'm not certain if six is enough we'll wait and see and of course once they're built you must assign them to a large stand or any stand in fact um, they're not limited to use on large stands I've got some over here assigned to medium stands and some down here assigned to small stands so they're not restricted for use with large stands and the same rule applies to our international zones there are things called passport checkpoints and they come in two forms you've got the manned version and the automated version so I will draw some of each so you can see what I'm talking about if I place a um, manned passport control here once it's built it will give me queue options much the same as security gates and some checking desks etc I'll also put an automated one next to it so you can see the difference it's obviously a lot smaller when you're dealing with the automated gates but the other thing to be aware of is that you will need them for exiting the passport controlled zone so you can see the blue hash marks of where the international zone one is you need these coming in but you also need them going out now I'm going to use automated ones for preference just to save on the amount of staffing that I require and the circle at the right hand side of what I'm placing here is really the key feature that is the entry point for the passport gate so if it's going circle inside the blue zone that means you're exiting passport control if it's circle outside the blue zone that means you're entering passport control areas so this is going into the international zone this is an exit so you can see I've got exit from international then exit from security and then of course baggage claim Typically when you're building the baggage claim for your large flights you will want to use the high speed uh, conveyor belts just because of the sheer distance that will be traversed going from your check-in all the way up to you know because these are so large <laughs> you will need 
a lot of distance or a lot of conveyor belt to get there so the, the high speed ones are beneficial they are however very expensive so again I'm running very low on funds because of all of the things I've been building now because I have the game setting where international zone isn't automatically assigned to large stands I'm going to have to actually choose that so I will select that for these you will no doubt have noticed that I haven't built a wall across the front of my international zone the passengers in this game are completely law-abiding they will never cross that zone without going through a gate so the fact I haven't built a wall there isn't a problem although it's something I intend to rectify as I go along speaking of automated things we've got automated check-in and automated baggage drop these work very much like the medium check-in desks where you've got your conveyor belt that connects up to your baggage system just be aware that there's an issue with the order you place them in you can't actually place the automated check-in kiosks until you have an automated baggage drop nearby much like check-in desks you need to connect your uh, automated baggage drops to your baggage bay so don't forget to do that now that everything is connected you can see that a plane has arrived passengers have arrived and they're making use of two of the medium-sized boarding gates the sheer volume of people that will need to get on a plane dictates that you need more than just one boarding gate because you can only really handle I think 75 people per passenger service agent so with 256 people to board this plane that's a lot more than one passenger service agent although now that I've just opened up all the automated desks the next plane should make significant use of those and not need quite so many passenger service agents you can see with the rate of people passing through the passport control here having just three gates is not really fast or two gates sorry one automated and one not is not really processing them fast enough so I'm going to add some more now that I've got a bit more money okay, a new plane has just arrived and you can see there's a red flag here they're not able to leave the secure zone for some reason I think the reason is that the secure zone hasn't drawn correctly over that section of wall and it could be the international zone doing the same problem so I'm going to make sure I apply that all the way along my terminal building so that we don't have this problem. And when I unpause, now you'll see that they can get out. It's one of the tricky things about jetways is that the white part here of the jetway covers up actual spaces where people have to walk and you can't actually tell whether it's a secure zone or not. If you see a warning on your baggage claim that says the conveyor belt cannot be reached by a connected baggage bay, but you're sure you've actually connected everything up, double check that you haven't actually accidentally reversed the direction somewhere. So you can see here, both sides of this are going to the right. That's not meant to happen. It's supposed to be a clockwise system. So I need to correct these two sections. In fact, I need to correct that section as well by the look of it. Once all of the arrows are pointing the right way, that warning sign should disappear. As I've mentioned in the past, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on your first flights when you're opening up a new section of your airport. I had several issues with mine. I'd actually forgotten to build the baggage security. I hadn't connected up my baggage claim correctly and I hadn't actually activated all of my automated drop-ins, uh, bag drops. So it's definitely beneficial to do one stand at a time. It also helps with the money situation because now I've got a bit more money I can actually expand 
my security zone and think about getting some more passport control desks and so on. <laughs>